Hello class! Good morning! Welcome to our online class. It's me, Teacher Edson, your teacher in this session. Okay now, before we start, I would like to assure that you are ready in your comfortable place so that you can focus in our lesson that we are going to discuss this day. So class, in checking your attendance, you just need to like this video so I can know that you already watch our lesson this day. Let's go to our objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to classify, measure, and represent forces graphically. For today's lesson, I will discuss what is force. A force can be defined as a push or pull and also represented by vector or has a magnitude and direction. It includes weight, tension, normal force, and friction. It also measured in newtons or dynes and may either be a contact or non-contact force. When we say force, it's either a push or a pull. Let's have an example of force. I have here a hand and a toy car. We produce force using our hand to move this car. As you observe, there will be a motion that is expressed in a unit called Newton, named in honor of the British physicist Sir Isaac Newton. A force has direction. If it is a push, it is directed away from that which excited it. Like this picture, if you push the drawer, the box, and any object, if it is a pull, it is directed toward which excited it. For example, tug of war, pulling a door, and so on and so forth. For example, the forces are those which humans and animals exert at will. So let's proceed to force weight. In addition, inanimate objects also exert forces such as the force that the earth exert on all things on it, around it including the moon, the sun, and other planets. This force is called pull of gravity or force of gravity. Anything on the earth's surface is pulled by gravity downward giving things their weight. Example, the sky divers. They pulling downward because of our gravity. Next, let's have normal force. When things touch or collide, they exert reaction force called normal force. A normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface that exert it. Normal force is pushing force, like pushing different objects. Let's proceed to tension. When you hang your bag on your shoulder, the strap becomes stop. This is because a force called tension was applied on the strap. Tension is a kind of pulling force exerted on a non-grid object such as a rope, string, or chain. Now, let's proceed to measuring forces. A scale is used to measure forces. When you step on a bathroom scale, there is a spring that reacts to downward pull that the earth exerting on you. This reaction pushes you upward. Some scales require that you hang the object being measured. An example is common laboratory spring balance. In this case, the weight is equal to the tension in the spring. You may not encounter many scales that measure weight in newtons. Very often, the unit of the scales are kilograms or grams. These are the units of mass, which is not a force. An older and non-standard unit of force that you might see in a scale or on a scale is the pound. So here are some examples of measuring tools. Measuring forces. In the International System of Unit or SI unit, the standard unit of force is the Newton or in symbol capital letter N. It can be broken down into 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. In the CGC system, CGC means centimeter gram second unit of length, mass and time. Force is measured in unit called dyne. It is never abbreviated. A dyne may be broken down into 1 dyne is equal to 1 gram centimeter per second squared. Now, let's proceed to representing forces through a diagram. We use a one-way arrow to represent a force on a paper. The length of the arrow itself 
is an indication of the strength of the force. Example, you know that two forces F1 and F2 are acting on a block such as F1 is 50 Newton to the right and F2 is 100 Newton to the left. We can represent the forces like this. We can see in the illustration that force 2 is longer than F1. In fact, the length of the arrow representing F2 is twice that of F1. The second important thing about these arrows is that they should always have at one arrowhead that points in the direction of the force. Now, let's proceed to contact and non-contact forces. One of the ways in which forces can be classified is whether they require that objects be touching. If contact is needed for the force to act on objects, then it is a contact force. When we say contact force, it includes normal force, tension, compression, the opposite of tension, and friction. If we say non-contact force, are also called action at a distance force. These include gravity forces such as weight and the force between the sun, the planets, and other heavenly bodies. A non-contact force also exists between charges particle or charged particles called electrostatic forces. Magnet also exert non-contact force between them. So that's all for today. Hope you have learned in our discussion. Next topic about the loss of motion.